everybody getting ready to put out another video here today and a good friend of mine had asked about you know the rifles I've hunted with well some of those rifles I don't have anymore I had back in my younger days 40 some years ago I'd get a rifle and I'd hunt with it one year maybe two years and then I'd trade it off but my goal was my father-in-law Charlie uh, that was his nickname uh, him and my other brother-in-law Dennis uh, Big Al's brother uh, next to oldest brother they both had rifles that I liked now my father-in-law first one I seen that he had was an ADL version and then my brother-in-law Dennis had the BDL both in 30 out 6 and of course you've already heard me say ADL and BDL for those of you that have been around as long as I have you know what I'm talking about these newer hunters probably don't have a clue but it's the Remington 742 and here's mine right here Remington 742 BDL and the only difference between the BDL and the ADL is the stock the BDL version has a what I call basket weave and a rectangular forearm not rounded and of course it has a Monte Carlo stock with that basket weave I have a military sling on it that's what my brother-in-law always used on his and I like it and uh, I've got a Tasco 3 by 9 I think it's 3 by 9 by 40 scope it's one of the old ones uh, that uh, you know from probably back in the late 70s and of course it's got scope covers on it this one a little bit loose but uh, it's been a great rifle I've harvested several deer with it it has a detachable magazine holds uh, four rounds so once you've chambered around you could drop it out put another round in so you actually have one in the pipe and four in the magazine but the, the 742 models got a bad rap and the predecessor to this I think was the 7 740 and uh, then they went to instead of a steel receiver they went to like a hard aluminum receiver well I don't know if I can show you in this or not I'll try to pull it up and show no, you can't. Uh, you can see it barely, right there. You have what's called a threaded threaded bolt design. Okay, and the uh, the issue is now this is after I mean probably thousands of rounds being fired in it. Uh, that bolt tends to chew the upper part of the receiver. I mean, you can actually take the magazine out and you can stick your finger behind the bolt back up in here. And on some heavily used ones, you can run your fingernail across through there and you will feel the uh, grooves that started in the top of the receiver. Uh, when they get so bad what can happen is the bolt will go back and basically like right there it's locked in place but it's because I got the magazine in it uh, the magazine has a lever right here that you use to close the bolt but uh, what would happen is when you'd fire around this thing would get jammed back in there and I mean this is what this would be one that was severely severely grooved in the back and it would get jammed and you couldn't hardly get it to free up some people you know just gave up but uh, 
So, you know, if you was looking for one of these just because of the looks of this rifle, I mean, it's got, you know, walnut stock. Uh, love that basket weave checkering. The, uh, uh, the way to check to see if it's had thousands of rounds shot through it is to pull that magazine out with the bolt closed and take your finger and run back against the back top part of the receiver. Now there is supposed to be a gunsmith, if it's not too bad, he can take those out. He can mill it out. But one time and one time only. Uh, this one, you can't fill it with your fingernail. So this one hasn't been shot extensively. Now I've had this for, I'm trying to think, I got it in the mid to late 80s I've hunted with it but I only checked the zero on the scope and that's it now this rifle I do not reload for you know I, I reload you see all the reloading equipment here I reload for everything except for this uh, I don't want to take a chance of having too hot of rounds whatever this scope is set with Remington 180 core locks I have several boxes of those I keep uh, just in case I decide to take it out and hunt with it. But uh, I've got what I'd call its sister, and I'm not gonna get it out because it looks just like this. It's the 760 BDL in 30-06. Uh, other than this is semi-automatic, 760 is a pump action, and it's decked out just the same way, military sling. I think it's got the Tasco 3, but I'm a uh, 40 scope on it. Uh, I'd have to get it out. Uh, in fact, this morning I got all these out and uh, oiled them up and got them, you know, ready to put back in the gun cabinet. Uh, check things out. And another thing too, if you would get one of these, even the ADL model. Like I said, the ADL has just regular checkering and a rounded forearm. Uh, and it has the same problem, like I said, with the receiver. You know, if you ever go see one and you say, well, I'd like to have one of these, check out the top of that receiver. You could usually take a flashlight and look in and you could see them if it's real bad, or you can take your fingernail, run across the back. But uh, the uh, 760 is in 30-06. Now I will reload for it. Uh, like I said, it's just a pump action. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Between even the ADL and the BDLs and the uh, 742s, when you clean these, make sure you remove the forearm. You got a screw up here, forearm slides out. You have a spring and you have a metal rod in there to keep the spring in place. That spring, if you hunt with this and you don't take it down and clean it real good and you're out in the snow you're out in the rain this tube in here will get rust on it uh my brother-in-law uh denny dennis he's got this same rifle he thought his he had to chewed out top in the receiver which i think he does but he thought his bolt had locked back come find out when he took the forearm off he had a flake of rust that had come off and you know there's a rod here you know this is gas operated there's a rod in here that springs on that works this and that flake of rust got on uh the guide and when the when it went back that flake of rust fell off and then jammed the bolt back it wouldn't it wouldn't return and uh but that was just because he hadn't taken the forearm off to clean it. It had rusted. So, you know, your firearms, you know, periodically, especially if you hunt with them, you need to uh, strip them down, you know, pull the magazine out, take the trigger system out, clean it. If you can get the bolt out, clean it. Uh, like his forearm, take this forearm off, clean underneath it real good, lubricate everything up, put it all back together, especially if you're going to store it. So, but you know, good buddy of mine, uh, Tim, he had asked about some of the rifles I hunt with. Well, 
like I said, some of them I don't have anymore, but this one I do. Uh, a lot of you viewers have heard me talk. Uh, you've seen me even reply to some of your comments. I'm a Remington nut. I've got this. I've got the 760. I got the 700 BDL. I got 700 ADL synthetic stock. I love Remington. The old Remingtons. Uh, then of course I've got my 870 Wingmaster, my 1100, an 870 Deer Slayer Slug Shotgun. So Jerry and I both are Remington fanatics. You know, Big Al, he's got the 700 ADL synthetic stock. Uh, I don't think he has a semi-automatic. I can't remember for sure. But uh, this is it. It's called the Woodmaster. Wood, Woods Master. Yeah, Woods Master. Model 742. Remington. 30-06. Great deer rifle. Thanks, Tim, for your question. Wish I had more, but like I said, gotten rid of them over the years except for this this was what I was after many years ago so a lot of the guns I hunted with in the uh, early 80s uh, are no longer here because once I got this this was my deer rifle appreciate everybody watching and it's fun to see you in the woods thanks for watching